Okay, I'm back, I'm Jeff Hart with theCUBE. We're here in the middle of all the action at Mobile World Congress at Cloud City. This is where the action is. Daniel Royce and Telco DR, digital, digital disruption here happening. This next interview I did with Casey Choi, Executive Vice President at Samsung. I did this remotely, he couldn't be here in person. We wanted to bring him in for a conversation. I had a chance to record this with him. He talks about the intelligent human edge, or industry 4.0. It's about edge computing, Samsung is a leader, obviously we know what they do. They're part of this IOT revolution. Casey Choi, brilliant executive. I really enjoyed my conversation, take a listen. Welcome to theCUBE's coverage of Mobile World Congress 2021. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We're here with CUBE alumni, Casey Choi, he's the executive vice president and GM of the global mobile B2B team, communications team at Samsung. Casey, great to see you. Thank you for coming off of this special remote Mobile World Congress. We're, gonna, we're here in person, but also hybrid event. We got a lot of remote interviews. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Hey, John, great to see you. Great as always to be with you and great to be uh, at least here virtually with the team in, uh, in Barcelona for MWC. You know, in Samsung, when I think about the edge, you are leading a team that's driving this innovation. Uh, we've talked in the past about industry 4.0, but the innovation at the intelligent edge, human edge, is a big part of it. With 5G, uh, it's just another G, but it's not just another G. You got to have a backbone, you got to have a backhaul, you got to have an interconnection, you have uh, um, commercial, not just consumer technology. So the edge is becoming both this human and device commercial environment. So the industry is quickly moving to this, you call it the 4.0 trend. What do you see happening? This is a clear change over the telco is not yeah. what it used to be. It changes coming fast, a lot of disruption. What's your view? Yeah, I think we see a number of things, John, and certainly from, from our perspective, which is, uh, I, I think we've got somewhat of a unique view on this because of uh, our, our huge focus really in consumer use and attitudes, and, and certainly it's been informed by what we've seen, what we've all collectively seen over the last year and a half or so, and are still seeing today. And I think one of the things that we're certainly experiencing is, I think the edge is, uh, it's expanding further out uh, I think it's also getting more tightly coupled in many respects to uh, to to the human factor, and uh, uh, it's not just a a set of you know billions of discrete sensors anymore. Uh, and I think the evolution of our thinking around this has changed quite a bit from the IoT version one uh, variant of this, which was more of you know what I would call billions of these things communicating all kinds of information. Uh, you know, either to the cloud or to data centers and doing it in, in, in a very voluminous way. And what we're seeing is uh, with the advent of uh, more of the human to machine interface and certainly the capabilities that we're seeing both on the network and the device side, it's really redefining how we're thinking about edge. Uh, and certainly here at Samsung and with some of our partners and we're starting to call this more the intelligent human edge where uh, the human factor uh, really begins to, to, to play a big role in how we're defining uh, the internet of things. And those things include really people. And, uh, and this is how we're looking at it. I love the theme, the human edge. I think that's very relevant. I want to get a human aspect here tied into on the industry side, because you know, as we merge, as we emerge from the pandemic and move to a broader economic recovery, you see the psychology of the industry where Cloud is one of the shining examples of what the pandemic highlighted. Cloud speed, cloud agility. And now you're seeing with openness in the telco industry, that cloud is coming in, open cloud, uh, interoperability. So the pan coming out of the pandemic, cloud is the theme. It's driving an economic recovery, which driving the psychology of we're back to real life, we're back to business, but it's not business as usual. The fashion's changing, the attitudes are changing. You mentioned that, and now the the disruption of how cloud will be implemented. And it seems to be telco is, is where this edge and cloud are just completely radically changing what was once a kind of a slow moving telco space. So, so how do you see the, the partnerships and, and coming out of the, the pandemic, some of the response of cloud impact, cloud technology, public cloud impact on this new 
telco. Yeah, let me try to unpack that a little bit. I think we see two dimensions on this. Uh, certainly on the, on the carrier side, the operator side of the equation, and we're certainly partnered with everybody uh, across the globe on that. Uh, certainly there's been a definitive impact around software defined everything, right? So, uh, and this has been accelerated really by the standards that have starting to develop around 5G. And even now there's a lot of discussion and I'm sure there'll be a lot of it at MWC around 6G and what is happening there. But I think with the advent of things like ORAN, for example, and uh, some of the activity that we're seeing really around um, MEC type solutions and opportunities, the traditional role of the carrier and the operator uh, is evolving and has to evolve, right? It is now much more aligned uh, with uh, the provision of these, uh, of these types of services that are very different from the type of data or voice services that we've seen in the past. So certainly we're, we're, we're seeing that transition. The second big transition is really around uh, the notion of hybridity. Now we've been talking about this now as an industry for a while, but I think it's really starting to take firm root. Uh, the idea of uh, not only multiple clouds, but clouds that are deployed either on-prem or certainly you know, available as a service in, in its various forms. So I think that combination along with the advances that we're seeing in the technology, and this is both on the connectivity side, so certainly around uh, ultra uh, reliable low latency communications, what we're seeing with things like slicing, for example, uh, starting to take root. Uh, as well as frankly, the devices themselves are getting that much more powerful and compact, right? This is what we're seeing with SOC technologies. It's what we're seeing with the functions being moved more and more to on device capability. So I think about hybrid, I mean, in my past, I used to think about it more as a small data center, right? How, how do you compact it, move it out to some, somewhere else? Now we're thinking about it more in terms of the, the type of processing capability uh, that you can put really in the hands of the human or hands of the device. And at that point, you know, you really start to get different use cases start, start to emerge from that. So uh, this is how we're thinking about this extension and, and what, I, what I'm talking about more as a, an expansion of the edge further out. You know, I love this, is it splicing or slicing? What's the term? Slicing is a technology? Slicing, network slicing. Slicing, not <laughs> splicing cable, yeah. slicing. Not splicing cable, no. Okay, no. so this has come up a lot. So splicing kind of yeah. points to this end-to-end, -end, you know, workflows. Mm -hmm. You look at some of the modern development, the frameworks that yeah. are successful, you know, you're seeing these multifunctional teams kind of having an end-to-end -end visibility into the modern application workflow from CICD pipeline, whatever. Now, if you take the concept yeah. of ORAN, you mentioned uh, open uh, radio access networks, this kind of brings mm -hmm. up this idea of interoperability because if you're going to have end-to-end -end and you add edge to it, you have to have the ability to watch something go end to end, but it's never been like that in the past because you had to traverse multiple networks, right? So this becomes kind of this hybrid, a little bit deeper. Can you share how you see that and how Samsung's working with folks and how you guys are addressing this? Because you, you can be at the edge, but ultimately you got to integrate. So you got openness, you got ideal interoperability issues, and you ultimately have to move around and work with other networks, other clouds and other systems. This is not, yeah. I always like that. So can you share how this is evolving and how real this is and what's your view on it? Yeah, our, our thinking on this, uh, I mean, let me start by maybe tackling this in a little, a little bit of a different angle. Um, one of the things that we see as been one of the barriers around interoperability has really been more on the application side of, of the equation. And uh, this is actually the third component uh, in, in making all of this work. And uh, let me just be, very clear in, in, in what I'm saying here. Uh, I think in terms of mobile architectures and really edge architectures, it has been one of the last bastions, if you will, of, um, of, of, of closed architectures. Uh, there have been very much what I would call purpose-built architectures at the edge. Uh, certainly that's been driven by things like the industrial side coming together with more of the commercial side of the equation, but we think it's time really to extend the interoperability of what we are seeing really on the IT side of the equation and really driven by cloud native. This is really in the area of uh, containers. It's in the area of microservices. It's in the area of cloud native development. And if we're really talking about this, we really need to extend that interoperability from the application point of view and the data point of view really to the endpoint. 
And this is where some of the work that we're doing, and uh, we really embarked on in earnest last year with Red Hat and IBM and with VMware, for example, in really opening up that edge architecture to really the open source community, as well as really to the microservices architectures that we have now seen propagate down from the cloud into hybrid architecture. So this has been really one of the key focus areas for us. Um, the network interoperability has really been driven by the standards that we've seen, you know, and uh, uh, that are have been really adopted by the industry when it comes to, for example, 5G standards. What we've been more focused on, quite honestly, is the interoperability on the application and data side. And we think that by extending, if you will, that uh, write once, run many type concept down into the edge and into the device, that this is going to open up a, a really a wealth of opportunity for us on the application and on the data side. That's awesome, I love the openness, love the innovation you guys are doing. I think that's where the action is. Uh, that's where the growth's going to be. I do have to ask you um, how you see edge computing in the IOT era um, in terms of security. Are we more vulnerable because of it now? And how are you guys addressing the issue of security and data, data privacy at the edge? What's your, what's your uh, opinion yeah. on that? What's that Samsung doing? I mean, you just have to look at, uh, you know, the news today to, to, to it, it's obvious that we are more vulnerable. Right. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, points of vulnerability are being exposed and they're probably being exposed in, in now industrial areas, right? Certainly with what we've seen uh, just even recently with some of the uh, the, the the attacks that uh, that that uh, uh, we that have occurred. So a couple of things there. Number one, um, you know, we are relying very heavily on our long history around establishing root of trust and and kind of zero trust environments. Uh, We've had our Knox platform as an example. We just celebrated, in fact, our 10th year uh, of the product. Uh, in fact, it was announced at MWC back about 10 years ago. So this is something that, that we're celebrating at its anniversary. Our belief on this is that uh, we really need to ensure uh, that we maintain a hardware-based route of trust when it comes to the, the edge. Uh, we can't only rely upon software protection at that layer. Uh, we can't net naturally rely upon some of the uh, network protections that are there. So, uh, you know, we've shipped about 3 billion devices with our Knox security suite uh, over the last 10 years. And this is something that we're relying very heavily on, not only for, again, that hardware-based route of trust. So uh, one of the key solutions there is our Knox Vault product, which, which we just released a few months back. Uh, this is really a, a safe within a safe concept, really ensuring that the biometric password and other user data is protected. It's really what drives some of our strategy around making sure that we rely upon something that protects all of the back doors that are uh, resident, not only at the software layer, but at the, uh, but at the, uh, but at the hardware layer as well. Uh, and then management is the other key piece of this. Uh, security without the ability of managing these thousands to you know millions of devices is really uh, somewhat compromised. So uh, we've extended a lot of our Knox management capability at our device level, really to address some of those particular attributes as well as these fleets become more prominent and they start to take on workloads that are more critical to IOT type workloads. Casey, great to have you on. Your insight's awesome. Love what you're doing at Samsung. And again, you're a leader. Uh, you've been there, you've seen those cycles of innovation. I have to ask you my final question for you. Sure. Uh, it's a personal one and, and a professional one. The last Mobile World Congress was 2019, okay, in person. <laughs> last year was canceled. A lot's right. happened in the industry since 20 something months ago. Now we're going to be in person, a lot of hybrids, still remotely, but there'll be people in person. The world's changed. What is the big change in, in the telco, telco cloud, telco edge? What's happened in these 20 plus months since the last Mobile World Congress that people should pay attention to? What's the most important thing in your mind? Most important thing, God, John, you're putting me on the spot <laughs> here, right? Uh, I, 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 think, I think it's wisdom uh, to be quite honest with you. I mean, we've certainly all collectively learned a lot in terms of user patterns and what people need and want. Um, and, and I hope to think that, coll that collective wisdom uh, is going to be a key part of how we drive this going forward. And then if I can just pick one more, uh, I, I would say reinvention. Um, I, I think what we're starting to see is that coming out of, uh, again, from 2019 to what we're seeing now, 
uh, we do see this opportunity for reinvention and rethinking, right? And uh, I, I think that's the difference and, and the pace of that is going to really dictate uh, how we look at this and how we, you know, collectively uh, solve these challenges. So I hope to think we're wiser and uh, that we're that we're more imaginative coming out of this. And uh, again, um, you know, after being in this industry for 30 years, we, we've not seen the types of things that we've seen over the last couple. So I hope to think that this is a pivot point for all of us. Well, Samsung, certainly a leader in many areas and great to see you on theCUBE here and the theme and your talks around intelligence, human, edge, innovation, open. This is a force, it's happening. And I think the big change, as you said, the wisdom combined with a reinvention is happening. And it's going to be a very interesting ride. It should be uh, uh, fun, to, fun to work on. It, it will be, John, and I thank you for our friendship and our, 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 our relationship over the years. It's always great to see you and to be with you. And uh, again, we're, we're very optimistic as, as we always have been coming out of this. And uh, again, uh, thanks for the time and have a great MWC. You too. Casey Cho, Executive All Vice right. President, General Manager of the Global Mobile Business to Business Unit, Commercial Unit at Samsung. This is theCUBE's coverage of Mobile World Congress. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching. Okay, we're back here. That was Casey Choi, talked about wisdom, collective wisdom coming out of the pandemic. Great friend of the Cube, great friend of the industry, doing great work there at Casey Choi, like we are doing here on the ground at Mobile World Congress in Cloud City, as well as Adam and the team in the studio. So back to you, Adam and team.